Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Jinyu tribe, where things have been getting very interesting over the last generation. For instance, we have a newcomer into the tribe, a very handsome Alik, who has just joined our family, and he was actually drowning. We we surprised him. I think Komi scared him when we saw him, and we were so excited. Oh, that could be a potential mate for Komi, and we ended up chasing him into the water, and Alik started drowning in the water, and Komi had to go and get him and befriend him so we could get him up out of the water before he died. So Alik it has taken a lot of damage. He does have the ability because of his claw to catch fish. I forgot that having claw will give you that ability. And he is going to be Komi's mate. He doesn't have very long for this world because of the drowning incident that he was involved in. But it's very exciting after about two generations now, or at least several days, to see a brand new unrelated male pop into the family. So I'm very excited about that and it was really really fun to have Komi go in and rescue him So she saved him from drowning I think that the reason he was in the deep water is that the only way a could really feed himself is either Chasing down bunnies and using his big body and claw attack to do so or by chasing down fish by using his claws to try to catch fish And even though he has a couple swimming from his webbed hind legs, he's not very good at it So I'm glad we got him up out of the water However, we do have a branch of the Janu family, or the Janu tribe, I should say, who is very good at being in the water, and that is our wonderful little tadpole, tidepole, uh, tadpole, or tidepole, tadpole group that we have over here. Oh my goodness, that's a bit of a tongue twister. But we're really excited because Triton here is getting ready for the birth of his first child. Everybody over here with blue gemstones have very unique water-related traits that randomly mutated into the tribe in different nests. And so Triton is unrelated to these two females, Orca and Jali, and he is going to take them both as mates, and we are going to try very hard to see if they can have some fishing tail webbed pod babies. And if they do, then between all of the different bits and pieces added together with his swimming tail and water body, with the girl's ability to go deep underwater because of their gills and their ability to crack things up because of their nimble fingers, we should have some absolutely excellent water creatures who can really redefine how the Janu tribe is able to feed themselves. So I'm very excited about that because we've never really explored the deep waters before. We could explore them with Jali, but she does not have the ability to catch fish. However, I'm not sure because I've never tested it if there's actually clams hiding in the deeper water. So I may send Jali out while she is waiting for her sister to give birth and get off the nest. And I may send her off on a little exploring mission in the water for the first time. So I'm really looking forward to that. Elsewhere on the island, we are still dealing with the fact that we don't really have any strong warriors who can defend us. Poor little Kuro over here was just innocently exploring and trying to figure out what the weird rustling was when he ran into a very powerful predator and he took a bit of damage. I'm actually going to scooch him one over. Oh dear. Yeah, there's that powerful predator. <laughs> I was trying to scooch him over so he could keep an eye out for it, but he is right there breathing down our necks. So this predator actually killed Turo, or excuse me, he actually killed, it would be kind of interesting if when they die you could see how they died, but he killed Kuro, like, and I don't think it really even counted Kuro's death as a death, he just mysteriously vanished forever, but he was dead, we saw his bones, um, and the bunny was dancing atop of them, which was kind of morbid, but Kuro died from this predator just ambushing him out of the grasses without pause, it was amazing, and I'm very worried because we don't have anybody who has very strong attack who is old enough to fight this predator, the only one with any decent attack happens to be a little baby Nadir and so I'm gonna move Nadir over a little bit I want him to stay safe so he can grow up he has got venomous fangs and he has a little bit of strength because of his antlers and his normal body size so we're trying to breed up some better warriors as well but that's gonna kind of fall into the hands of hopefully Komi and Alik having really big bodied strong children with claws so we'll keep an eye on them 
And we may end up having Navarre and Doli having more children, or we may end up having Navarre possibly breed with another female, possibly Piper. I was thinking maybe, maybe just mixing Piper and Navarre together and just seeing what would happen would be interesting, but we'll have to look into that a little bit more in the future. For now, let's keep an eye on this predator and let's go ahead and see what Orca's first baby in the tide pool is going to look like. Oh, darn it, the predator moved forward, why? Okay, hang in there, Kuro. Kuro's not bleeding just yet. I'm gonna have him go ahead and do a couple good attacks and then try to get away. Kuro's kind of acting as bait, at least. And then I'm going to have Jolie get far away from that, that guy. And actually, would, hmm, hmm, nope, that wouldn't make a very good mate. So Jolie is going to get far away from the fact that, or the chance of getting attacked. And I'm gonna have New Deer. Okay, so this is orange, not red. There we go. New Deer is going to go ahead and kind of stand guard. I think that he's going to wait until the last moment to attack. So I'm going to keep him kind of just right over here, I think. Yeah, it goes red once we use his move. And then I think the only other one who might have an opportunity to be any good at attacking is maybe his father, Navar. So I'm going to have Navar come over, mate with his mate just one last time. Just, well, hopefully not one last time, unless that's the last baby I want him to have. Just in case, and then step forward to be ready for if the predator comes running towards us. And I'm going to leave Piper right here so she can focus on collecting up these berries. And then little Kier Kier, he has two attack, which happens to be some of the best attack that we've got in the family so far. So I'm going to have him move over just in case we really need that desperately to have the new creatures. And I didn't mean to put Dolly in the nest. Why did I put her in the nest? Oh, we have Claw, thank goodness. Let's put Claw in there. Yeah, let's get Claw and let's get some big body uh, or maybe some lean body. I was thinking about putting lean body in. Where'd lean body go? As one of our mutations, there's water body. There's lean body, there it is. As one of our mutations, just have faster creatures as well. So Dolly, you stay there. I guess you're going to have a baby now. Didn't really mean to make that happen. Uh, Sony is going to just stick around, or Sani, excuse me, is going to stick around here, keep an eye on her berry bush. And then let's come over and finally check out this baby. We haven't even looked at this baby yet. So we have Raceri. Oh, dang it, Raceri. And she's actually definitely better at being a land-based creature. So Fui, she is going to have to be passed on. She will leave the tide pool and she will head over for land and become a member of the land-based side of the tribe because she does not have her parents' special abilities. She has water body and gills secondary. She unfortunately doesn't even have like webbed feet. Oh, so we totally missed out on this one. I might have to be a little bit more careful, like we might want to put webbed feet in as the possible mutation that their babies could have, uh, but at least she's healthy, and that's really what you should hope for in the end, isn't it? So she is a healthy baby, she just doesn't have any of the traits we were going for, so maybe we'll try breeding Jolie next, uh, or, and we'll just keep an eye on that, just trying to breed up a good creature that is good for the water. Alright, so we'll gather up some of that, Triton is going to go ahead and defend his nest, uh, Orca is going to, maybe she and her sister will switch. Let's try switching them. And we're going to let Jalee come up. And we'll get Jalee pregnant. And we'll let Jalee have the next baby. And we're, we're trying to get in our little tide pool children. So we'll see if we have any luck with the next one on our water tribe. Alright, so the fighters are lining up. The tide pool creatures are trying to have tide pool babies. And then we've got our little lovebirds back here. So let's let Newt gather up that nut, shake the tree, gather up the next nut. And then let's go ahead and Comey, let's have her mom come over. Maybe we can help out by clearing away some of the grass. Comey is going to go ahead and I'll have her move here and he's gonna come after her and then she, mate with her. She's going to jump in here. There we go. So we managed to do all of our exploring and we managed to get them on the nest in no time. So Komi and Alik are going to be having a baby together and hopefully it will be a healthy baby. They do share one immunity gene, but it's just nice to have a new male kind of pop into the family with whatever he might toss in there, which apparently includes Cracker Jaw, which would be kind of interesting to see. Uh, maybe you're, you're supposed to switch from having nimble fingers to having Cracker Jaw for your water-based creatures with aquatic body. There's so many different ways to get to the same results. That's part of what makes it so fun. And then we've got Claw and Lean Body in as possible mutations right now. Uh, you know what, let's change Lean Body out for, hmm, let's put Poison Fangs back in. 
We want to have some good fighters. All right, so we've got two females on the nest. Let's go ahead and see what kind of babies they're going to have. Since this, the, this is the first baby of Alik and Komi, let's go ahead and see what she's going to have. <gasps> oh, a little, oh no, oh no, oh boy, oh my, not good, not good at all. Uh, Nadir, oh boy, okay, all right, we're going to have to handle this somehow. We have a panda baby who's really adorable and looks like a little Reese's Peace pumpkin cupcake thing. Uh, I'm going to name him, uh, let's see, Komi and Alik, uh, Pukir? Uh, Puk? Puk? Uh, let's see. What's your, your Kulo? Uh, uh, we're going to name him, uh, uh, Puki. Just Pookie. <laughs> yeah, just Pookie, because that's adorable. Um, and a little bit of concern going on over here. So Orchid, you have about as much attack as your mate Kulo does. Kulo is going to give it a good rush, and he's going to do a couple quick attacks. Um, this is his last last move. That's all he's able to do. I'm going to have Orchid come over, and this is the tragic end, I can't believe it, of Orchid and Kulo defending their family, defending their children and grandchildren and their territory from this predator who has come in and he has got so much strength. Oh, what am I going to do? Rira, are you going to try helping out? You're just going to get attacked too, but everybody, I mean, Rira was just a scout. I'm just a scout. Oh, that sounds so, so, oh, okay. All right. That sounds really heartless, but she isn't one who I was planning on breeding. So we'll send her to help out with the fight. Um, let's send the little Risari. Where should I send this child so she's safe? We're going to send her down here by her aunt. And her aunt, Sani, can probably join in the fight, actually. We're about to have a big pile on on this particular predator. And Sani does have the ability to go fishing, but I've not really utilized it. So I'll send her up here and she can contribute. Oh, the fight is over over here. Oh, Kuro. Kuro, you can go ahead and feast on on the meat of that guy to show him what for. And then I'm going to have New Deer come on over and just lick him. Kuro's about to die, but I thought it would just be nice to let Kuro go ahead and have a moment. And then I'm going to get Kuro over here. And I'm going to use his last move to clear the spot next to the predator. Uh, Navar. Uh, I hate doing this, but I'm going to send Navar down there to help fight too. Oh my goodness. And Navar has had another child named Vonro. Woo, that was a lot of stuff going on all at once. So another swimming tailed son. Oh, okay. Let's see what we've got here. Good collecting, good strength, um, good swimming. Pretty much average across the board. Just better average than our, our last few generations. How many generations are we on now? One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Ooh, this is going to be very interesting, you guys. All right, let's gather up these berries. And then Dolly, I think that she's kind of had enough babies. Let's get uh, Jalee in on the nest. And Jalee can go ahead and eat some berries. And let's swap out Claw and Poison Fang for Fishing Tail. And I guess maybe we should put Gills in just to be sure. Just to make sure we have uh, the creature we're going for. Or maybe we should put, let's put in Water Body. There we go, just to be sure that we pass on the genes that we're really aiming for. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and let Orca kind of do some exploring over here and maybe be our first creature to go into the deep water and start exploring. So hopefully they'll start having children who are somewhat related uh, to the the tide pools and somewhat related to the water like we're really going for. And there's a little uh, Rosary kind of hiding down here. We'll name her a little, uh, Ray, and she's going to work her way up and join kind of this part of the family, focusing primarily on taking care of things on land. I don't think that she's really one. I'm going to stay over here with the tide pool family. Hmm. And we've got a lot of food, so we could technically think about moving to the next island pretty soon. Uh, I think we might start leaning towards that. So we might start picking from the next generation if we have a good selection. And maybe get ready to move to the Middle Island pretty soon, you guys. There we go. Newt is just gathering up his little nuts. And let's see what kind of babies Komi would have again. So she's got little Pookie. And he actually has the ability to go fishing. He's got really good strength. Look at that. Yes. Oh, he's our strongest creature on the island. Thank goodness. Alik. 
You have wonderfully strong children and no movement. You are such a you are such a dork, Alik. All right, we're gonna move him over here. We're gonna move her here. He's going to breed with her, and then I am going to move Comey up into the nest because Alik only has a few more days to live, and I want to have as many babies with him as possible. So I'm really happy with little Pookie, our panda, an adorable little Reese's cut panda. And now we need to fight this carnivore. Hmm. Gather up these berries with Kier Kier. Kier Kier, would you be a good mate for Ray? Um, yeah, actually he and Ray would ha have good babies, so we might just have them become mates. We'll have to see, that's a bunny. I would bet money that that's a bunny because of the berries that are over here. And there's probably a burrow really close by that we're gonna stumble on because that predator, before we started stealing his food, was occupied with killing bunnies. So maybe that was a bad move. And I'm gonna have Dolly, who's kind of been like our, our seer. Has she passed on the A immunity to any of her children? Dolly. Oh my gosh, Dolly, you've had so many boys. Uh, did she pass on A immunity? Sani has A immunity and a possible mate, I think. So yeah, she's only passed it on once, hmm. And I'm really sad because I actually really love Dolly and her mate, uh, Navarre. They've been an amazing deer couple having lots and lots of interesting children. And I'm kind of sad about the idea of not breeding them anymore, but we really don't need to. I kind of want to, but we don't really need to. So I'll have to think about that. All right, she'll gather that up. And we'll send her over here. Oh, those berries were raided by bunnies. Just to light the area up too so no predators pop out and eat all of the babies that we've got over here. And all right, we've got a predator to keep an eye on and we have two babies coming in. So Jalee, we're really hoping for swimming tail and swimming abilities on this baby. Ah, oh, phooey. Oh boy, and there's a big fight going on. Oh no, somebody has- two somebody's have died, but it was of old age. Did you attack my Navar? He did attack Navar. All right, everybody get him. Get him good. Down you go, Predator. All right. And Rira can come over. She can lick Navarra better. She can keep an eye on that. Orchid can, can step over here and kind of like survey the area. But we have taken out at the cost of two, one sick one and one elder. We have taken out that Predator and the family territory is defended. Ah, so at least there's that. And unfortunately... <laughs> How did we not end up with another another child? We have so much potential with the ocean here and no children who are displaying any ocean traits, water body, and gills as their recessives once more. Fooey, we might have to get really tricky. Um, hmm. Sani, I might have to try breeding you with your brother after all. Um... Yeah, I might have to try that out just to see if I can combine it the way I, I want them to be. We'll have to see. We're not having any luck yet. There is an element of luck to the babies they have after all. So Jalee has had a very handsome son, Kuvan, though. I will say he looks quite attractive with the red mane, red antlers, green eyes, solid color body, and F and E immunity, which is kind of fun. And he has recessive violet eyes. So that might come out really unexpectedly in the future. So all together with the genetics he has, what kind of creature? is he? He is a fast mover who's got okay attack. Uh, not great. Not really spectacular, but okay. And he's got some good collecting. So he might be a beach runner, it looks like, who either gathers up berries or who focuses on gathering up some of the clams along the beach. We'll have to see. Speaking of clams along the beach, Ray just found a clam. Awesome. So we might try again with Jalee. We'll, we'll just have to try, try again until we get lucky with finally being able to breed up the type of baby that we're really going for. And then Sani, I don't really want to breed her with her brother per se, but oh, oh, well, you know, don't want to breed with her brother. And then a new option just shows up out of the blue. Hello there. You're a little bit different from the other male that we just brought into the family. Oh, speaking of which, um, okay, hang on one second. Uh, We've got, well, nope, you know what? I'm gonna look at the new mail because this is a little bit exciting. All right then, buddy. You're different looking. You're not what we're going for in the Tidepool family. New Vanku, a spiky body, so he'd be bad to mate with, who can do nothing. He can do nothing. I don't want this creature as our mate. Look at him. He's got double no paw. He has spiky body. He's got hemophilia. The only thing that's not wrong with him is the fact that he has normal eyesight. And and the fact his immunity... Oh no, it's immunity eye. But you know what? I'm not that desperate. I'm not that desperate. I'm sorry. I'm gonna name you, um, like, Moel. Because he looks like a little, a little, like, angry mole porcupine chipmunk. 
kind of like a legless angry mole porcupine chipmunk <laughs> and I, I I don't think I want to have his babies I um, we're not that desperate at the moment so I think Sandy is gonna say thanks but no thanks and I guess that shows the options are better if we just go ahead and we'll try having a baby with her brother just because I'm getting really desperate to see the genetics really play out with the water creatures speaking of which orca uh, oh, that's right. She doesn't have very far swimming. I'm gonna have her start swimming around. It doesn't look like there are very many. She can breathe underwater, but it doesn't look like there's anything in the deep water. So it may not be worth it to explore in the water until we really have high swimming. So I'll keep an eye on those guys too. All right. Meanwhile, up here, Kier Kier. He's got decent collecting, decent movement. Uh, new deer. New deer, how did you get sick? No, you're really important, New Deer. You don't understand. No, New Deer, why did you why did you change your name? There we go. New Deer is actually very important as one of our fighters, and he has E and B immunity. Um, would he be a good mate for Sani? Yeah, he would be a good mate for Sani. So I'm gonna start sending him oh, go away, you. Go away, Moel. I'm gonna start sending him towards this nest, and he and Sani might kind of cultivate that nest, and we'll just see what kind of interesting babies they have. Uh, we are, Noel, you better leave our baby alone. We are getting to the point where we're gonna start thinking about which creatures to take with us to the middle island as well. Um, it's just kind of tricky, because I don't feel like we have a lot of whiz bang, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, uh, really powerful creatures just yet. But you know what? It might take a while to get there. We do have little Pookie. And I think Pookie actually is kind of on that whiz-bang level of he's pretty awesome. He could probably do quite a bit. He is our strongest creature with strength level 4. He does have the ability to catch fish because of his um, his claw. He also has nimble fingers. So he is kind of multi-purpose. And so he can kind of collect things on the run while fighting off others. So I think Pookie is actually probably, if I had to start picking creatures to take to the next next island he would be one of them so we're gonna have him kind of stand over here so he can solemnly learn about the dangers of predators and look at the bones of his ancestors as sad as that sounds and then we're gonna have Comey she has her new son Cuckoo so Cuckoo has been born with swimming tail so Cuckoo has had swimming tail and big body he has spiky body recessive he has B&D immunity so he is not unhealthy he does carry both hemophilia and the short sighted eye short sighted eyes and hemophilia and he has a normal snout. Hmm. So he's kind of really average across the board, but not in a bad way. And it's interesting that we brought in the fishing tail with him when I was really trying with the other nest to get the fishing tail. So I'm going to have Comey once again become pregnant. Um, and if she's going to jump into the nest, what I'm going to do is I want to have Claw. I want to have Poison Fang. And I want to have, uh, she's already going to have big body child, isn't she? Let's put claw in there because maybe we can get double claw. We need some defenders. So she's going to jump over here, become pregnant and jump into the nest. And then I'm going to make sure Alik with his absolutely pathetic, no movement, tiny frog hops is going to stay right where he's at. Newt is going to gather up this nut and that nut. Uh, the sad Moel, Moel is just kind of like... We have sympathy on him. He can't really do anything. He can't really get our, our animals pregnant. He can't collect. He can't pass his genes on because they're just not very good genes whatsoever. So we're gonna leave him alone. And I wonder if Doyle sh or Doli and Navarre should have one last child. Um, maybe if I can get them to be close enough together at the last second. We'll, we'll just see if that happens or not. And then, ah, oh, dang it, the bunny's got those berries. And then we'll send little Van Ro, uh, who's a very good collector, over here to help out with collecting those berries. What shook? Something shook. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna have our last baby of the day, which is going to be Comey's little baby. And we're going for another really awesome twist like little Pookie and not really a really awesome little twist like little Cuckoo up there, but that's okay. Uh, Cause we had, we had the tail in when we did that. And let's see what her child is going to be. <gasps> yes, a female with fangs. That looks awesome. All right, a spotty female named Isla with fangs and she's got pretty good attack too. So look at that. 
All right, unfortunately she has hemophilia. So she's kind of like a dart in and try to dart away sort of attacker. If she gets hit, she's going to bleed to death. But at least we've got some progress with some fun new genes going on there. Moel is still uh, roaming around and keeping track of, <laughs> he's so sad looking. He's still roaming around. We're going to get new deer over so that he can start collecting up all of these berries and starting to form a little bit of a family spot with Sani here, who's going to be jumping into the nest next. And then we're going to try very hard. We're gonna get a little Kuvan. He's gonna go and become one of the uh, land tribe members. And Jali is going to jump into the nest once more, crossing our fingers that hopefully we can have some good water babies born between all of these water traits. And yeah, okay, all right. I think it's time, you guys, to start pulling in a bunch of our resources, gathering up some food, picking some of our most interesting creatures, and scooching some of their babies over to the next island. So we're going to start getting ready to move. I think we've made some really excellent progress, though. Oh, I can't attack. Piper, what do you mean you can't attack bunnies? We've made some really good progress with being able to uh, take good care of our creatures and I'm really glad we're not bringing Moel into the family because he literally can't do anything. I think he just kind of scares the children. Well, they don't seem very scared of him. But all right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.